Good morning, this is Judy from Artistic Artifacts in Alexandria, Virginia. And it is Saturday morning, bright and early. Um, we have our Facebook Live that we hold before the store opens at 10. And today we actually are partnering, partnering with Bernina. Um, I have been sewing on a Bernina since 1978, which is way earlier than I ever thought I would be a Bernina dealer. So I was very pleased when we were able to become a Bernina dealer um, five years ago, four years ago? I don't know. Uh, so we, we, that is my choice of machine, but I will tell you that I just want you to sew by, the, by hand, by machine. I want you to be creative because in your soul, that's part of what you need. Um, and I don't get a lot of time to sew because, of course, we're running the business and trying to keep you guys educated and reach out and the website update and newsletter update, da 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 Not anything any of the rest of you guys don't go through either. But I do love sewing on my Bernina. So we are going to, I got a lot of information to cover today, but we're going to talk about my little fabric books. So... I, I was getting in the car this morning and I was like, well, how do I explain why I make a book that just has fabric in it? And I thought, well, do you remember the books, at least I remember the books, that were as kids and it was you scratched it and sniffed and it had a smell. So I call these my petting books actually because I can open them up and I can see my textures and I know that this is dyed indigo and the pearl button which I hoard and I had some stitching and then I just have like oh, okay this came off of a shirt I had when I was you know when batiks were in this one was here um, a Marcia Dursey then we have some cheesecloth so I just all these little different textures just help me. They just are very comforting to me. This was a sample we did and it's a hand dyed doily. This was for a demo for something else. And again, I can just feel the texture and it calms me down. And then here's this piece and here's this. This is a woodblock print, which I love. I did Chris's French knots over here. And all of a sudden I had these little pieces and I found this perfect cover. And I am not a bookmaker. I don't know all those fancy spines. I don't know how to do those stitches. I just love creating the pages. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. This is really easy to do. This is a piece of fabric here batting is in the middle and another piece of fabric on the top. Now, this is a couple of different ways you can do this, but this one was done where I did this side, I did stitch past my patch and I used my page, and then I just fused backing so it covered all of my stitches. And it's beautiful fabric. You don't really need much more than that. So this is the size of my page here. And then I actually sewed it right down here to attach it to my cover. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, and I have a tendency to work like um, a whirlwind when I'm in my studio. I'm pulling stuff. I'm throwing stuff on the floor. I have a, you know, it's just like, okay, fast, fast, fast. Because I don't, as I said, get a lot of time to do um, create and a lot of times I've been thinking about it a little bit so I know exactly where I'm gonna go it's always mulling in the back of my mind does that happen to you do you think about something when you go to sleep or I finished sewing this do you guys think about things in the back of your mind it's it's in that back part of your brain I believe it is and I believe it's with you all the time no responses yet, but lots of check-ins from all over the country. Okay. And uh, we've got someone coming in from Kuwait. Kuwait? Oh, hi. 
Hi, everybody. This is awesome that you're here. So, um, okay. Are we ready? All right. What I do, um, okay, let me just tell you a couple of supplies and ideas before I jump right into um, my demonstration. So up here, we have a 570, Bernina 570. Now, this machine has the dual feed, which I love, especially as a quilter. A dual feed is going to help feed your fabric through evenly. It does not replace a walking foot, but it does feed. The features on here are like operating my cell phone. It's very friendly, easy, moves back and forth, and you'll see that a little bit more once I start using it. I have threaded it with Wonderfill 50 weight cotton thread. That's kind of my go-to thread. I do love 12 weight also, it's a hundred needle, and that is nice for books and giving you a little bit bossier thread. So that is the machine that I believe I love, I because I love the dual feed. The dual feed also comes on the 770, the 790, the 880, and it's a wonderful product to have. Then, what do you want to use as, um, well, let me go back to threads. So threads, wonderful threads we have, and it has really great colors, and we have these kits that are already here that gives you a range. So we have 50 weight and 12 weight. 50 weight is kind of what we call a quilter's cotton sewing thread. 12 weight, as I said, is gonna be a little bit bossier and thicker. It will work in the top of your machine with a, a 100 size needle. Then we have this little iron that I have here. You'll see me use it here, and it's small. Okay, and I have my wool mat here. So these are really nice and portable. Uh, I like the way that it absorbs the heat and it's easier. Covers, so you saw my cover here. This is just a single layer of a vintage piece of linen. The cover I'm gonna to use today is a vintage piece of paisley. And um, I did put some Indian cotton on the back. I fused it to give it a little more strength. I didn't use batting in you, but you could use batting. So that's what I used here. Then we use Craft Text. This is a great mixed media product. It sews wonderfully. White allows you to paint it, which I'm a great paint girl. I love paint. We just had a journal class that used this for your covers and it and it's wonderful but if you don't want to paint there's also colors lots and lots of different colors right then um, so the craft text is great cork is great there we have some sparkly uh, material that's wonderful so those are kind of great bag uses wonderful textures they're wonderful for your books as well now I use Misty Fuse most of the time, all the time, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time as my fusible of choice. It is, you'll see it out of the package, it has, it's without paper, you do use a, a parchment paper or a goddess sheet with it. That is the way that you fuse it, but I'm, I always have this available because if you can't stitch, you can always glue, and fusible is the fabric glue of choice, so it works really well. Most of my books are from scraps, so I um, have a friend, Liz Kettle. Her company is Textile Evolution. She's now on the West Coast. And there is a Facebook page called Stitch Meditations. So it started this worldwide uh, event, experience about stitching for the joy of stitching. 
And Liz has a video that talks about how she has created it and what her purpose was in doing that. And so it's, it's kind of, we do it a little bit at a time. Some people do it every day, like their meditations, that it would be yoga meditations or something like that. Well, I tend to go through about when um, I do a bunch of them and then I stop for a while and then maybe I'll go away and I'll do a bunch of them and I'll stop for a while. And I have this little box that I keep them in. Let me You can see I, I don't have all that many of them. But these are my pieces that I tend to use in my stitch books. And people post them on that Facebook group. It's a wonderful group, Textile Evolution. You can sign up for the newsletter there. It, and wonderful education, wonderful. Classes, Liz teaches online, online classes. Um, but so I just kind of make them and, and I don't, again, have a purpose for them, which you're not supposed to have a purpose. And it's just the idea of stitching. Most of it is hand stitching, but maybe you have a box where you tried some embroidery motifs that are samples that maybe could be created as your texture in your book as well. Think of those samples that you did in classes. Think about what you, um, you know, just might have lying around and cr start creating a box and pulling them together. And then you can assemble your own book as well. So it's good. A lot of times I'm using these Indian cottons. I have pieces. We have these great two yard pack bundles that give you an assortment that you can find on our website. These are scraps. If, of course, you don't have any scraps, but I haven't met anybody that doesn't have any scraps. Um, but these are just some ideas that I think are nice. And you want the fabric to feel good. You want it to feel comforting and soft and, and because it's all about the, the process of, of creating these little things. So those tend to be what I use in my book. Do we have any questions, Kyle? Nope, more checking in from around the world. Oh, wow, wonderful. Canada, Thank you. Thanks for being country, here. People from Texas, Kansas. Okay, all right. Well, we have customers from all over the world, so um, it, it, we, we appreciate you and, and welcome you this morning. So please type any questions that you have or comments that you would like to share with us in the chat. Um, Kyle is, is watch, watching those as he's taking care of videoing. Lots right. of people are always thinking, like you are in your studio, yeah. lots of scraps. Yeah. <laughs> there, it's good to have, and, and, and sometimes it'll the fabric will spark an idea, or the thread will spark an idea, or like I had with the vintage linen, it was like, oh, this is perfect for a book cover. All right. So, let's see. Um, I don't, if I'm gonna cut my page, I always make my cover bigger than what I want it to be. And so, because I can always trim it, I can always cut part of it off if I don't want it to be. But this piece kind of went, mm, all right, well, maybe we'll do something like that. And you can see, I don't have my spine defined or anything at this point. I just said, okay, this piece is gonna be my cover. Um, I tend to wing things. Um, I think that, you know, we're, we're not, we're looking for the process to make us feel good. We're not necessarily looking for perfection. If I try, strive for perfection, I usually don't get anything done. So that's kind of how we're doing it. Now, let me show you. Please take this as just guidelines and, and please make it your own. So Kyle, um, maybe back this way might be, because I'm gonna show you, ouch, that is hot. All right, so I kind of had an idea on how big my page is. I just cut them up. They don't all match. They're different sizes. It's That's okay. Now, one of the things you want to know is if you're going to put your cover 
here. Two quick questions. Yes. Do you use a certain size square? Um, no, I, I just, so when I'm doing the stitch meditations, I start with three inch, four inch square of um, flannel or batting. And mine goes off the square when I'm making it. I just stitch and add pieces. Sometimes I try not to cut the pieces. Sometimes I cut them or I, most of the time I rip them. Um, so that's the base, but I'm usually go beyond the base. And then uh, do you organize your scraps? And if so, how? <laughs> um, you have I, project bags. I do. I do have those zipper project bags. I try to organize my fabric and my scraps. Um, so let's say, what do I, how do I do that? I have alpha and I have small drawers that are this wide and not, you know, maybe this deep. So I have one drawer that's probably Indonesian fabrics, one drawer that's batik, uh, one drawer that is kind of like regular, what I would consider regular cottons, but, but precious. Right now I have a drawer full of Leslie Tucker Jenison's two collections of fabric that I'm mulling over what to do with those. So, um, and I do have zip bags. We sell some zip bags and they're nice because they crinkle, they cr you know, you can zip the air out of them. It's not like a zip, zip plastic lock that gets all the air stuck in it. And I'll usually have a bag full of scraps and some flannel and some thread in there to um, be able to take it with me, throw it in, carry it with me. So, um, all right, so here I put Misty Fuse on one side of my batting. So you can use batting, you can use flannel. So anything you want in the middle. Canvas, if you want something stiffer. Timtex, if you want something stiffer. So here, this is Misty Fuse. You can see it's web, web very, it's lightweight. You can fuse it onto silk, and it still keeps the drape of the silk. So I just had put it down here, cut it with scissors, loosely and then I have a um, goddess sheet which usually because my ironing board gets pretty messy I have tried to put it top and bottom all right so I have it here and here now this sheet has fusible on one side if I want to I'm going to um, let's see how we do this here We're getting compliments about the quilt. Oh, yes. This is quilt just done by Chris. And let's see what she said. Um, the blog post is up with a PDF download of the revised pattern. So this is with Kathy Dowdy fabrics that we still have in the store. And we have the blog post that was written by Chris. This, this quilt was done by Chris. So you can go to Artistic Artifacts blog and be able to download the PDF with the instructions. Turned out wonderful. And then we have some people who I believe are just coming in. What size strips are you using between the squares? I'm not sure if I... Um, what size strips between the squares? Um, Hang on to that thought a minute. Let me think about how to explain that. Um, because I'm really not very precise. And then, as I said, I don't work with patterns. I kind of make it up as I go along. So we can see. Oh, and then um, what's the temperature of the iron that you're using for it? For hot. It? Yeah. Really hot. And I, I think it's actually way too hot. But um, so there's one dot, two dots, three dots on this iron. Um, I do not have um, steam in it. It doesn't matter with Misty Fuse whether you have steam or not. Okay, so you can see. So here's my, this is how I do things. This is a big piece of fabric, and I, I wanted these little corners because now I have something on, and I'm going to just cut. Okay. 
All right. So here's a page. I'm working about, of course, I have my thing mixed up. So my book pages are going to be about 11 inches by 8 inches. But I can do them any size you want. And you make you determine that based on what you're going to put together. Sometimes you could take pictures and print them out on fabric and then put them in a book if you wanted to, a travel book, a, a home book, a family book. That's you can make it any size that you want. All right, so here's my my one, and you can tell you know I'm not not perfect. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to see where my batting is. This is half of my page. Now, I want to um, so I have my line here. I just ironed my page in half. any misty fuse on that so I'm gonna put I always put misty fuse on it can't hurt it doesn't hurt anything at all so I always make sure I have it on there you can see I'm very precise I just you know, and if it's too big, you fold it over a little bit. So I have my, my the Misty Fuse is on my piece. I'm gonna do this. It heats up very fast. It's always better if you let fusibles cool, but who has the patience for that? All right, so one of the things I really love is to have my piece come off the edge. All right, but now, yes. Uh, can I'm not sure if I'm going to say this right. Um, can you use Terial Magic instead of fusing? Um, Terial Magic, yes, is going to stiffen the fabric, and um, but it's not going to adhere it. So you can use the Terial Magic, and then you have to sew it down. This page, I with the fusible, I could be done at this point. But because I want to sew, I'm going to put uh, some stitching on it. All right, so let's see. I'm going to come here. Now, I have a 34D here because I have a D foot, a, D, a machine that allow me to use dual feed. I'm always going to use the dual feed. So you engage it in the back, and here it is. If you have a D foot and you don't engage the dual feed, you're not going to stitch the way you want because your feet your feed dogs are not going to work correctly. I don't know how else to explain that. It's just it's just not going to work cuz trust me I've done it. Um so what and this was, is a great time to use your pattern stitches because we don't have a lot of time. I'm just using a straight stitch. So then I have to tell the machine I have a 34D on. So I come here 34, I have a D, because if I don't tell it what machine, what I have, it's not going to sew. I have a zigzag plate on, okay, so that's my plate, and I'm going to do this, and maybe I'm going to make my stitch a little bit longer, okay, so I can do it with these knobs here. Now I'm just going to sew around. This, this is a perfect time to use your um, knee lift, which 
I can't operate it with this where it is now, so I didn't bother. But the knee lift is, is again, a favorite tool. I use it all the time. I have my needle down. Just lost that thought. Okay, and I'm able to cut. So on these machines, you have lots of your tools right here. Kyle, can you show them this? So here's my reverse, here's my scissors, and here's my foot up and down, and this is my start and stop. So I actually don't need to use my foot pedal if I don't want to. It's really fun. Now, I have it sewn on. You can see from the back. I just did a little bit and now I've sewed my page here. And maybe I'm gonna just sew across the top. I can wait and put my second page on there. I don't really worry about strings. I just kind of let them hang. It's all part of the process here. Um, so then what I would do is I'm going to put Misty Fuse on here. This is going to take longer than our half an hour, I think. Um, And I just keep my Misty Fuse in a zip bag with all my little scraps and things. I don't throw any of it out. I use it all. So the point I wanted to make with this exercise is that you want to sew anything before you put your fusible on the back side because your fusible is going to stick to your sewing surface and it's a little frustrating and I know this because I've done it and it's not worth the aggravation so I try to do whatever I want on my front or my focus and then whether it's sewing hand stitching anything I try to do that before I assemble my page Okay, here's another one. Again, these are all scraps. And I iron them on before I cut the size. Do we have any questions, Kyle? Not at the moment. Okay. You notice how precise I am in everything I do, right? That's that's the secret, is that you want to be able to, you know, finish. We always say finish is better than perfect around here. Um, and that's really how we do it. Oh, are you making one page or two? So I actually, this is what's called a signature. So I can, I'm going to do it right here. So a signature is what gets sewn into the book. Now when you're working with paper and bookmaking people, they're going to put multiple pages in here. But my signature's four pages. One, two, three, four. Those are my four pages, and this is my one signature. Did that make sense? So that's how I operate, is I'm working with one signature. A lot of book people will go and they'll, here I can, I can show you with papers. So they'll put multiple pages, and that will create a signature. 
So, and they'll so they'll when they do their bindings, they'll bind these all in to the same way. But I treat them separately. All right, I'm gonna show you. And this doesn't matter if you have um, fabric or paper. It works both ways. You can sew it all on your machine. Okay, so here you can see I made a little signature. And, and, and this is all okay. All of these different sizes and things are all fine. They don't need to match. If you don't like it, you trim it. It's really good. It can hang out from underneath. So let's see, where do I want to be? Um, okay, let me move this iron down. I'm going to come this way again, sorry. Now, I'm going to change my foot, take the dual feet off, my foot off. And what I look for is I'm looking for a foot that is going to give me a small width. Because um, this one works very nicely when it was the only thing I had. Um, so it's protecting myself from my needle, which is important. So this is the leather roller foot. It's number 55. And then the other foot that I have is a number 53. So you can see this one is actually even smaller width than the roller le leather foot. So we'll put that one on. And it, it is um, green, so it's going to move a little better. Okay. All uh, right. Uh, another question. Yes. Uh, would you sometimes put another scrap on the other side of the first scrap? Yes. I I will. Even though I've made my I, I've made my book and I've assembled some of these pages, I can always add to them later. I can stitch onto them. I can get a needle through that webbing, the misty fuse, because it's very thin. So I'm going to put these things in my book, but I'm not quite finished with my book with it. So I can always add to it. Is is that? Um, and that's one of the reasons why I don't. You know, this is a really big cover, and it's not quite finished, meaning that I've, it's allowing me to add pages as I go. So I'll start the first page so that it comes over. All right, does that make sense? So I've literally taken it, I've put it here. I have an iron down here. I'm not really good with pins. I will show you the line. Two quick questions. Uh -huh. Was that Teflon on the foot? Yes, Teflon. That was the word I wanted. Teflon foot. Uh, and then could you also use a zipper foot? Zipper foot, yes. You can use anything. You just want as small as possible because the first one's not the problem. It's as you start adding more pages that you want the smallest width you can get. Okay, so here, I've ironed this page in half. I, again, your mind could go crazy. Your, your page could be smaller, it could be sticking out. There's, make it come beyond the book. It's very cool. All right, so let's see, I want it to come down a little bit more here. Sorry, my brain just takes off with all kinds of different ways of doing this. Make it your own, do something that you, enjoy. This is just guidance. There are no hard and fast rules here. Okay, so you can, s I've pinned it. That's going to be my line that I'm going to sew. And I have two pages that I'm going to put in so I can show you. All right.
this one's the easy one. So here we have our page and it's sewn in and you can see it's here and it's just with a straight stitch. Use your decorative stitches inside your page. Okay, so now the next page. So I have to fold this here. So this is why you want as small of a width on your foot as you can get. Because as you add these pages, you're going to have to space them out. I can't go right up against here, and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to come, I'm going to see, I'm going to give myself a little bit of space so that when I sew it, and I'm just eyeballing it, so my sewing's going to be here. I don't want to sew this page to this page. I want to just put it next in the book. All right, so where's those pins I had? So this is why you want, don't fight the, the, the foot up against that first page. Does that make sense? Chris, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Do you use the same print, price, P-R-I-C, typo maybe? Oh, I don't know. Can you help us out there? Is that Chris who has a question? Yeah. Do you use the same process for your mixed media books? There we go. Yes. Okay. That's yes. I do. This is exactly how I do my mixed media books. So I sew with pa my paper. I make my stitch a little bit longer because you don't want your paper perfed. So um, that is one of the things. And I did bring some papers to show you how to do that. All right. So this is what's important, is you have to give yourself some space here when you line it up. And you can see I measured very specifically not. Do you always sew two pages at, I'm sorry, at uh, once or four? Uh, what is, is I, it always in sets? Um, hmm. Um, um, I am sewing the pages that I think are ready to be in the book. And I do as many pages as I want. So could you possibly just do a singular page then? Absolutely. You could make a wonderful single page. You just adjust your cover. All right. So see, you have space here. I can open my page. And I can keep going. So you can see, so here's my front. My book is gonna wrap, which will, the wrap will lessen with the more pages I add. So that's why I never cut my cover exact. I always leave more space in my cover because when you're binding these things to in here, you need more space than a traditional book. Does that make sense? Does everybody have that? Um, is there a way to do it from front to back? Front to back. Straighten the cover? Um, yes, that's what I did, is I started from the front. So I set this, so this is gonna be my front here. And I set my front up, because that was what, that's my known. So my known is, here's my first signature, and I want my cover to cover my first signature. So that determined where my first page, and I do start from the front and go towards the back because that gives me more flexibility than starting from the back and going forward. Did that answer that question? Did that make sense? Just waiting on a response. Okay. So I could be done if I wanted to be at this point, but I know I'm not, I know I have more. So I'm going to add more pages. And I always try to put fabric that I like on the back side, so to speak. So I have my stitch meditations in the middle, and then I have my nice fabric on the back end. So I can put something on it or not. I can leave it as is, which is what I did with the blue one. Oh, I'm sorry. We misunderstood the question. Okay. Um, I believe the question is, um, what about adding a single page instead of a signature? Front to back. Um, a single page? 
Yeah, not doing so. Okay, months, that's a different class. <laughs> that's a different structure and yes it's possible to do that but i'll have to show that to you on a another facebook live it's linda Ging. she said she'd ask in the store okay yes linda you can definitely do that um i yes that's a different one i'm, I'm trying really hard to stay focused on this but uh and but and not go like crazy with telling you everything i know but let me show you this one so this is a mixed media journal, um, and this this is using multi-purpose cloth, which we were able to have um, for a while. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to set my front cover up. I don't have anything on these pages, but I just want to be able to. We had a journal class, and we didn't get to actually sewing it in. So I have my fold line here. And I'm going to sew it just the same way. I guess if I'm smart, I'll use a pin. Um, with papers, you want to, uh, that's not going to work. We won't do it that way. Um, with papers, you want to make sure that your stitch length is long because you want, you don't want to perf your paper. And just for um, everybody who's joined us partway through, um, yes, a recording of this will be available. Check out our Facebook page and YouTube. So it's sewn in there. There's my page. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you was this is, we have Indian cotton paper. So this is made from cotton rag, which reacts a lot like cotton. So if I want to just sew this in here, I could do that. If I wanted to sew, say I want to sew it in here, I could do that too. But you got the same idea is making sure that you have your spacing before you sew. I used to try and get my pages like right up next to each other and I it just was too frustrating. I broke a lot of needles. It did not work. Okay we have a few more questions. Okay. Um, let's start with the easiest one. What size needle do you use when sewing paper? Um, I 90 most of the time. Okay. And how, what, uh, how, how long is your stitch that you're using for the paper? Um, this is 3.45. Okay. So you definitely just want it a big one. Okay. So here you go. Now we have two signatures sewn in. We have this same gap in here that allows us to add to our pages. The other reason why I like it is because my pages always have a lot of stuff on them, three-dimensional things. So when you're making your binding this way, it allows your book to expand and it doesn't give you that, um, uh, fly, it, it, it just, the book expands. I can't find the right words. See, like, like this it doesn't do that thing that goes with spiral bounds where you know you have this wide it just actually fits very nicely in here and i did collage over these you can fuse over your binding if you want i just collaged with some but again it's just showing that you can combine the fabric with the paper and create the book that you want you more, more questions? We have one. Okay. And it might be, it might have to be a written one. How do you explain uh, to people about mixed media books with, uh, I guess, with fabric or with paper? I'm not quite sure. Um, but <laughs> non art people don't get it. Okay. All right. That's okay. That's a reasonable question. I need a cup of coffee. I need a sip of coffee first. Um, okay. Mixed media, my definition of mixed media is that you take a piece of fabric 
and you paint it. You are now a mixed media artist. That's it. So you, what we try to do at Artistic Artifacts is we try to show you that what you do on paper, you can do on fabric. What you can do on fabric, you can do on paper. So there's many times that we will actually show you two things. We just did a demonstration on Thursday about inks. Part of the sample was that it was on fabric and, pa and also on paper. So you can think of going, if you go to a big box store, which will remain nameless because I really don't want you in a big box store, um, you can see papers, scrapbooking type supplies. Well, it's rubber stamps, it's inks, it's ink pads, it's things that can all go on fabric as well. So once you bring, you know, fabric on fabric is fabric. Paint, ink on fabric is mixed media. It's very, very quick step to get to mixed media. Um, I have done, we just did a journal class that was um, in the classroom. So we're trying to figure out how to offer these classes on Zoom or on Facebook. Um, Gwen LaFleur does them for us. I just can't, I shoot from the hip so often that I'm a little worried about doing them on Zoom, but that's what we'll get to. So the class that we just had, they created and stamped, it was two days, and they did used a gel plate with paint, they used inks, they used pens, and this is craft text. So that's a, a product that is sold in a lot of quilt stores that you can do, you can find, is this craft text because they're making bags and things out of it. So, um, Mixed media is really pretty simple. It's just, it just has that aura for a complicated thing, but it's really not complicated. Everybody can do it. Did I get close to answering that question? Uh, um, no response yet, but um, another one would be, I guess, going back to the books. Mm -hmm. um, what do you mean by collage over? Okay, so, uh, all right, we'll look here. This, see this stitching here? This is where I've stitched my pages in. These, you can't see where I stitched my pages in. Now these happen to be fabric stamps, fabrics that I have painted. So I took a gel medium, which is a fine art tool that's glue, and I, covered my stitching. So that's what I mean by collage over it. I hid my binding. All right, you see, we could talk about this all day. It's very exciting. It's a really easy way to try it. There's no pattern. There's just guidelines. This is how I do it. There's probably a hundred other ways to do it. But I like simple, I like easy, I don't stress that things are not the same size, they don't, there is no perfection because once, so when you're looking at a page, it's like, oh, it's gotta be perfect. But when you're looking at a page, it is perfect. Once you sit it on your book and you not don't have a magnifying glass against it, whatever you do is gonna be wonderful and enjoyable. So, I um, hope that you enjoyed this. We, we have to get going. I went <laughs> half an hour over and I talked really fast too until they keep telling me I always start out zooming like a race car and then I have to slow down so everybody can catch up to me, but I'm sorry about that. So um, if you have some questions, uh, you can email us at sales at artisticartifacts.com. We do have multiple YouTube videos on our um, YouTube channel that talks a little bit more about some of these mixed media items. We will be doing, um, watch for our events in Facebook. We have Thursday night, the second, second Thursday of the month, we're gonna do a how do you use it so we can start showing you some of these mixed media tools that maybe you haven't been exposed to before. And, we have Comment Sold, which is a store that you can shop with an app that has unique items on there that are not always on our website. 
uh, Creative Minds, Artistic Artifacts Creative Minds is a group for our community. It's our community and we have a current challenge going on right now that will um, is inspired by the cherry blossoms, it runs through the end of the month. At the end of the month, we will draw a name and award you a $25 gift certificate that can be used online or in the store. So I think that's all my announcements for you. Um, Kyle's check in one more time. Okay. Oh, um, hold on. For questions. Chris had one. Chris? Uh, do you use different thread weight for paper uh, versus mixed media? No. I just use whatever thread's in my machine. <laughs> really high tech answer. <laughs> Sometimes I'll look at the color, or sometimes I, as I said, I really like the 12 weight, but I didn't want to get into changing the needle because the needle has to be a 100 needle on that. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you online or in the store. Thank you.